So today's talk is going to be all about uh, the waste management service that's provided to residents on the Central Coast. So hopefully we'll be able to answer lots of questions or get you all up to speed on all of those recycling issues that you may have. Uh, just to start off with though, an acknowledgement of country, I just wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we're holding our meeting today. Um, I pay my respects to the elders past, present and future and recognise the continuing connection and contribution to this land. And I would also like to extend uh, that respect to any Aboriginal people who may be joining us today. Um, and as I mentioned, just microphones muted, screens off, use the chat function. If you would like to ask a question, um, type it into the chat function and Jody and Lisa who are here helping me today um, will try and answer those questions for you. And also um, we will be doing some polls later on, which is just some questions that I'll pop up on the screen just to get it a bit interactive with everyone, but it will be um, uh, confidential, I guess, like we won't see what your answer is. Um, so do feel free to jump in and get involved with that when that happens. And also just to let everyone know again that has just joined us that we are um, recording today's presentation. So my name's Michelle and I work with Clean Away. Um, as their education officer on the Central Coast. Clean Away has the domestic waste contract with Central Coast Council. Uh, that's a 10 year contract that we started on the 1st of February in 2018. So what are we, we're into our fourth year of that now already. And uh, we provide services for approximately 140,000 properties across the Central Coast. And we employ over 120 people to operate this contract. Uh, we're located up in Summersby, um, up near where the reptile park is. Um, at the moment though, I am working from home at the moment. So please do, um, I do apologize for any disruptions we may receive as I do have children at home, but hopefully we will be fine. <laughs> Uh, so we have over 65 collection vehicles and we empty approximately 280,000 wheelie bins every single week on the Central Coast or over 50,000 bins a day. So it's a massive contract that we have here on the Central Coast. It's actually the second largest waste and recycling contract in the, com um, in the country on the Central Coast. We also will remove approximately 5,000 bulk curbside collections each week. Uh, that does depend on uh, lots of different factors though. So seasonal, we do get more bulk curbside services during the warmer um, months or when people are on holidays or at home. And we're certainly getting a lot of extra bulk curbside collections while people are currently locked down at home as well. So our contract with the council means that we come around and we service or empty your three bins you've got. Um, we don't process any of the waste or recycling. We just transport that to other places to be processed, recycled or landfilled. Uh, we also run the customer service for council. So if you ring council about your waste and recycling service, uh, you're more than likely will be transferred through to Clean Away. We call ourselves One Coast um, on the Central Coast to help with your customer service queries. We also run lots of different education programs, which is part of what today is. Um, we have had to develop some different education programs whilst we've been um, in lockdown, hence trying to do Zooms to engage with our residents. And usually uh, we also would be doing a bin tagging program. So we've got um, myself, which is the education officer, and then two resource recovery officers working on the Central Coast, who um, in normal times, would be going around and inspecting people's recycling bins and we do a bin tagging education program um, where if you're doing the right thing you get a blue tag if you're doing okay but a few little wrong things we give you an orange tag and some further education on on where you need to improve um, and if you're using the recycling bin as a garbage bin then we give you a red tag and a big orange sticker and the bin um, won't get emptied until you've sorted that out. Um, so, but unfortunately, during the current lockdown, um, that program is on hold until it's safe to, to go back out and um, be doing that one. So waste management, how do we manage our waste? So at home, most of us will have the three bin system, which is the yellow lid bin for recycling, the green lid bin for your garden waste and the red lid bin for general waste. Um, we've also got access to a bulk curbside service. So most households will get six bulk curbside collection services a year. 
and that can be for general bulky household items that um, won't fit in your bin, um, such as old furniture or old sporting equipment. Um, or you can also use that service for bulky garden vegetation. So if you've done a lot of um, gardening and it's too much for your bin, um, you can use that service for bulky garden waste as well. You might have compost bins and worm farms or even chickens at your home to help you manage your waste as well. You might use the state government's return and earn initiative to um, dispose of or recycle some of your um, eligible bottles and containers. You might also use um, the chemical clean out service or community recycling centre, different recycling drop off services and charities to help you manage your waste that you produce at home. And you might also then when you're out in public use our um, litter bins, which we also service those litter bins for council and you might use return and earn facilities as well. So just as people are joining us, um, my name's Michelle, I work for Clean Away. We've just had a few extra people join us now. Um, so if you do have any questions, please just use the chat function. I've got Jody from Council and Lisa from Clean Away helping me answer any questions. And we just ask that people keep themselves on mute um, whilst we're doing the presentation today. Okay, so we're going to um, head right into our recycling bin, which is the one that most people are interested in. Um, so what can you put in your recycling bin? So very, very briefly to start off with, and then I'll go into some further detail for you. Um, but in your yellow lid bin, you can put metal, food, drink, and spray cans, glass bottles and jars, plastic bottles and containers, and paper and cardboard. So we try to keep it really simple with our language that we use. And when you look at those items on the screen, you can see that it really is limited to packaging that you would use every single day or, or most weeks, let's put it that way, maybe not every day. Um, so it, it's not complicated. It's basically for, for um, food, drink, and different items that you have at home in your kitchen, bathroom, or laundry that are a, is a container um, or a paper or cardboard item. We are going to go into some further um, details though. So let me just go to our next page and we're going to actually do our first poll now. Um, so I'm going to just, got lots of people joining us today. So we're just admitting a few more people there. Okay, so we're just going to share our first poll with you all. So this is um, set up so that we can't see your answer, um, but it's just nice to get everyone to have a little go and see what people know before I tell you too much information. So a poll should be on your screen now. Um, which metal items can be placed in your yellow lid recycling bin? If you think it's uh, the top answer there, baked bean cans, soft drink cans and hairspray cans, select that one. Or the other option is spray paint cans, scrap metal and pots and pans, or all of the above. So I'll give you a few moments to do that. And just while we're doing that, I'll just check in with Jodie to make sure we're all okay. Not quite. No. <laughs> I have something I can't answer because I haven't heard of sublimation paper before to see if that's recyclable. I've had a bit of a Google. I think, I think it will tend to be, but I'm not sure. Have you heard of that before? I haven't heard of paper? it either. So do you, on your Google, did you find out what it is? Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Um, Hester, I saw it's from Hester, so um, look, Hester, I'm not exactly sure what it is, so I can definitely look into that further, and if we can't recycle it, I'll reach out to you and let you know in an email, so if you don't hear from me, then it, it's fine to go it in. seems to be, um, it's like a form of transfer paper. Okay. All right. Okay, so thanks for everyone that just took part in that poll. Um, and most of us got that answer correct, that it is the baked bean cans, soft drink cans and hairspray cans that we can recycle in our yellow bin. Um, we don't accept any spray paint cans, scrap metals or pots or pans in the service. And a lot of that comes down to um, the way that we sort the recycling and that it needs to be a certain shape um, for the initial sorting to happen. So we know that when the cans are around shape that they will go into the right section of the factory. When we start adding different bits of scrap metal into the system um, that might be different shapes and sizes, they can actually cause a lot of um, 
blockages and breakages in the system when they're trying to be sorted. So we stick to metal cans that have had food, drink, um, or spray cans that you've used on your body or within the home. So we know that they're a fairly low toxic material. Um, so nothing from the garage or the outdoor. So the list you can see up there on the screen, we've got air freshener cans, baby formula tins, coffee and Milo tins, cooking oil spray cans, deodorant and hairspray cans, drink cans. We can accept um, our foil and foil trays. Um, but if you are to put those in your yellow bin, we do ask that you scrunch them into a ball shape so that they get sorted um, better when it gets to the facility. So um, if it's a, a piece of our foil and you've just covered your dinner with it and it's relatively clean, scrunch it up into a ball before you put it into the yellow bin. If it's a tray that's had a meat pie on it or a, an apple pie and it doesn't have all the pastry in it, again, scrunch it up into a ball and pop that into your yellow bin as well. If it's a barbecue tray and it's absolutely filthy and you can't clean it, then we don't want it. So if you've cooked you know, meat on it or something and it's got all the sauce stuck to it, um, it does need to be relatively clean for it to go in the yellow bin. So, but again, if you've just sort of used it to serve or store food on, um, scrunch it up and pop it into the yellow bin and it's it's fine to be recycled. Uh, food cans, so that could be, you know, old tins of tuna or your tins of um, tomatoes and corn, they're all fine to go into the yellow bin. Insect spray cans are okay, olive oil cans and pet food cans. Um, people get a bit funny about the pet food cans, but they're fine. I think it's just that ick factor. Um, so with your cans, you need to make sure there's no food left in them or no drinks. Um, and with the lids, what I recommend if you can is pop the lid back inside if it's from, say, your, your food cans. Put it inside the tin and then just gently squeeze the top of your tin together so it stays in there. And then that will really ensure that it gets to um, be recycled at the other end. So we're gonna launch into our next poll question. This one is on glass recycling. So which glass items do you think can be placed in your yellow lid bin? So the top one there is drinking glasses, ceramic coffee cups and light globes. The next one is vitamin jars, beer bottles and peanut butter jars or all of the above. And I'm just gonna check in with Jodie again. All good so far, thanks all Michelle. <laughs> Right, I'll just give us a few more moments, Sam. We've got lots of great recyclers joining us today because we've all selected the right answer for this one, which is uh, the vitamin jars, beer bottles and peanut butter jars. So I'm just going to end that one now. Okay. So yeah, with your glass bottles and jars, we do um, say clear green and brown glass bottles and jars. Um, and that's just pretty much what you'd be getting from the supermarket that's got products inside of it. So it could have had food items, um, beverages or medicines inside of it. Um, they're all okay. So as long as it, it had a, a product in it, then it can go into the yellow bin. So a bottle or a jar that had a lid and had an item inside of it. So beer and soft drink bottles, jam and other spreads, uh, juice bottles, medicine and vitamin jars, pickle and olive jars, oil bottles, sauce jars and bottles and wine bottles. Um, now the glass bottles and jars aren't actually being recycled into new bottles and jars um, anymore. And we used to have to be really strict on the recycling process when they were being recycled back into bottles and jars um, because it was a really tricky process to do. Um, but now because it's been so hard to get that glass product clean, they're actually crushing that glass and turning it into a sand replacement um, that's used in the construction industry. So it's not as essential, I guess, um, that it is just the brown, green and clear glass bottles and jars when we're using it for that process. Um, but we still need to make sure that it is a glass item and not a ceramic or a glass that might have had um, lead in it, which, you know, different types of glass can have that where we know that the packaging glass doesn't. So I can actually just hear some background noise. So I just get everyone to check that they're on um, mute there still an option where I can mute everyone um, or Jody or Lisa I might get that you can just check that everyone's that's on. done now done great um, 
Yeah, so we still are just going on with that messaging that to use glass bottles and jars um, for our glass recycling at this stage because it just makes sure that we aren't getting some of those glasses um, that might have the lead in them and those kinds of things um, to ensure that where it's being used as sand, it's not going to create a hazard. But we will launch into our next poll, which is for paper and cardboard. Uh, so which paper and cardboard items can be placed in your yellow lid recycling bin? Um, we've got magazines, pizza boxes and laundry powder boxes, shredded paper, long life milk cartons and disposable coffee cups, that would say, or all of the above. Now, you would think that paper and cardboard recycling should be the easiest thing <laughs> when it comes to understanding what we can and can't recycle. But unfortunately, over time, it has become a bit complicated with our paper and cardboard recycling. I'll just give you a few more minutes to have a go at answering those questions. It is anonymous, so we can't see your, um, if you are guessing right or wrong. <laughs> and I'll just check in with Jodie to make sure we've got no questions there. We're all good at the moment. Thanks, all Michelle. Good. Thanks, Jody. So for those of you that have joined us a bit late, I've got Jody from Council and Lisa from Cleanaway helping me um, on our talk today. And my name's Michelle from Cleanaway. And I'm just going to end that one. Most of us um, were okay with that one, but we did get a few people select some of the wrong items or all of the above. So with um, that one, it is only the magazines, pizza boxes and laundry powder boxes that we would accept in your yellow lid bin. Um, and I am going to go through the no or the items that cause contamination in a bit more detail once we've talked about all the items we can recycle. But what it comes down to with paper and cardboard is that some items are lined with different products such as plastics or foil linings or sometimes even polystyrene fillers um, that make it hard for us to recycle it in this service. And also paper and cardboard needs to have a, a decent size to it for our sorting facility to be able to capture it. So that's why we say no to things like shredded paper. It's too small and fine and gets mixed in um, with all the recycling and becomes tangled around all of the sorting equipment. And we simply just can't capture it to be able to sort it into the right section of the factory um, for it to be mixed in with the paper and cardboard. Um, I will go into more detail on the other no items with the paper and cardboard once we're finished talking about all the items that are accepted though. Um, but with your paper and cardboard, the main items we will take are newspaper, magazines and brochures, wrapping paper and cards, cardboard boxes, fresh milk cartons and egg cartons, laundry powder boxes, pizza boxes and office paper and envelopes. Now with the things like the pizza boxes or if you've had some other takeaway food, um, maybe some hot chips and it's it's in a cardboard um, box. As long as there's no food items left on that, we can accept it in the yellow bin. So if your pizza box has got melted cheese and olives and sauce stuck to it, then what you could do is rip the lid off and put the lid into the yellow bin, but we wouldn't want the base going in there. Um, and again, if your box that had some chips in it has got sauce or stuck to it, um, and bits of um, chips stuck to it, then we wouldn't want that box either. But if it's just an oil stain, then it's okay to go into the yellow bin. So they can deal with the oil in the recycling process. They can't deal with the food products though. So it needs to have no food on it. Um, with things like magazines and brochures, we can cope with um, staples. So you don't need to remove the staples. And with, um, the envelopes, you don't need to remove that little plastic window. And with things like cardboard boxes, you don't need to remove sticky tape. So all of those little bits and pieces can be dealt with in the recycling process. What we do need you to do with paper and cardboard though is to try and flatten it. So if it's a big cardboard box, try and get it flat. If it's a rolled up newspaper or, or brochure, try and flatten that out before you put it into the yellow bin because our main uh, sort at the facility where your recycling is taken to is um, engineered in the way that it assumes paper and cardboard is flat and that bottles and cans and containers are round and all 3D. So that's how we do the first initial sort with the sorting process. 
So I will go into those no items soon. Um, don't fret, I will tell you why we can't accept some of the um, long life cartons and the coffee cups. But we are going to move on to plastics, um, which people tend to get a bit confused over because there's so much different plastic out there now. Um, so which of these plastic items could you put in your yellow bin? Plastic buckets, baskets and plant pots, shampoo bottles, yogurt tubs and sauce bottles or all of the above. And I'll just check in with Jodie because I can see there's lots going on in the chat there. I can't see <laughs> yes. what the chat is, but I can see the numbers going up. So yes, I think you need some help with there, Jodie. Yes, please, Michelle. Um, yep. Just to confirm that I've given that I am giving the right information. So books, old books. Yeah. So old books, as long as they are um, a soft covered book that doesn't have a plastic cover on it are okay to go into the yellow bin if it's a hard cover or if it has a plastic wrap around it then you would need to try and remove that cover before you placed it into the yellow bin and the second one is the smallest size piece of paper like like receipt the quest sorry the question was on receipts so I've had mixed um, messaging on whether receipts are actually accepted and it comes down to some kind of thermal coating apparently on the receipts. Um, so let's not use receipts as an example because I think we're not supposed to put them in the yellow bin. <laughs> um, but let's use say a business card, anything much smaller than a business card with paper or, or nothing smaller than a business card. So business card size or bigger is, is the way to go. Um, so if you're using a shredder to protect your identity and you don't want to put, um, say, your bank statement into the yellow bin, you still can't just tear it into tiny little pieces. So it needs to have that, that bit of size for us to sort it. Um, so if it's, say, a bank statement, what I'd recommend is uh, ripping your name and address and your account details off the top of it. And if you want to shred that smaller piece of paper, then shred that and then rip your, your bill into four sections and put that into your yellow bin. The shredded paper can't go into your yellow bin because it's too small and stringy. Um, out of your three bins, it would need to go into your red lid bin. But if you do have a compost bin or a worm farm at home, you could mix it into that. Or you can even mix it into your garden bedding as another option. So if it's, if it's something a bit confidential that you really don't feel comfortable putting in your yellow bin, uh, maybe you live in a shared environment with people that you don't want seeing that as details, then yeah, that's what I would recommend, just um, removing the bit that ties it back to you. Yep, Jodie? Yeah. <laughs> I can't answer this one, but I think it's just easier to answer it verbally. Gift wrap paper. Oh, yeah. So with wrapping paper, as long as it's paper, it's okay. Um, so, but some papers are actually, some wrapping papers are, are a plastic or a cellophane or a, they've got that shiny appearance, which looks like foil, but it's still actually a plastic. So the best way to tell is um, if you can tear it easily, then it's paper. If you can't tear it without sort of giving it a little cut first, then it's a plastic. So if it's easily um, tearable, it's paper and it can go in the yellow bin. If it's not easy to tear, um, then it has a plastic coating on it and we wouldn't be able to accept it in your yellow bin. Um, so we almost, nearly all of us got this poll right, back to our plastic poll. Um, some of us selected all of the above, which unfortunately is not correct. We can only recycle in our yellow bin um, shampoo, the shampoo bottles, yogurt tubs and sauce bottles from that listing. So I'm going to say the following phrase, um, which is what we like to say when we talk about plastic recycling on the Central Coast. So try and remember this when it comes to your plastics. The only plastics you can put in your yellow lid bin are rigid plastic bottles and containers that hold a product that you used in the kitchen, bathroom or laundry. So if it's a bottle or a container and it had an item inside of it that you used in your kitchen, bathroom or laundry and it's made from plastic, you can put it in your yellow lid bin. It doesn't matter about that little triangle and the number. Um, that's on it, as long as it's a bottle or a container that had a product inside of it. Um, so those little numbers that you might see on your plastic items, and we used to talk about them a long time ago, um, they identify the type of plastic the item is made from. 
We can accept all of those numbers within the yellow lid bin as long as it's a bottle or a container that had a uh, product used in the kitchen, bathroom or laundry in it. The reason we need it to be a bottle or a container is because it needs to have that 3D shape for our initial sorting. Um, so the reason why we don't use those numbers anymore is because those numbers are on lots of different items. They're on polystyrene products, they're on flat trays, they're on toys, they're on clothing, they're on um, fabric bags that have been made from plastic, they're on plastic bags. So some of those items we just can't accept in this service due to the sorting process. We need to be able to sort the recycling into their separate categories to be able to send them off to be recycled. We also are now in an environment where we need our recycling to be really clean for it to be a desirable item for it to be um, taken by someone to recycle it into something new. And there's lots of different competing factors that we're competing against now in the recycling industry, such as the return and earn facilities, which um, if you've used those where you take your, your recycling and you put it into the little machine um, and you will know it, it rejects it if, if it's not good enough or if it's not the right item or if it's got um, material in it still because those machines can tell um, and if it's not the right item and it doesn't have the right barcode on it then it will also reject it. Um, unfortunately our bins don't have that capacity to do that so we're getting all different types of items put into our yellow lid bins and some of those items um, the recycling factories are getting really fussy about and one of them is meat trays which is a plastic item um, but that has had the potential to have blood contamination within it. And so that is one of the plastic items that we've been asked to um, state that they don't want anymore. So that is one item that might fall under a container from the kitchen, bathroom or laundry. Um, so it, it is probably the one thing from that phrase that we really don't want. Anything else though, so milk, juice, soft drink and water bottles are all okay. Yogurts, butter and ice cream tubs cherry tomato punnets and strawberry punnets, um, plastic takeaway food containers. So what we would have called a Chinese food container, takeaway container, they're all okay to go in as well. Sauce and dressing bottles, even the biscuit trays are okay, but not the wrapper, unless when I get to the next slide, it gets a bit tricky. <laughs> but we'll talk about it just on this slide for a second. So the biscuit trays are okay. So what your Tim Tams sit in, you can pop that into the yellow bin. Um, shampoo, conditioner and body wash bottles, laundry liquid and detergent bottles and cleaning spray bottles. Um, so any other bottle or container that you're using in the kitchen, bathroom or laundry that came from the supermarket with a product in it is okay to go into your yellow lid bin. Now we do though on the Central Coast have access to a great new program called Kirby. Um, so if you're not already signed up to Kirby, I recommend once we get off the talk today that you go and sign up because it's now open. It was a trial, but it's now open to all residents on the Central Coast. But you do need to sign up before the 9th of October to be involved. And what this Kirby um, program means is that we can now recycle our soft plastics on the Central Coast, which is a, any um, food item that's come in a soft, scrunchy plastic bag um, or, or your shopping plastic bags as well, which are also soft and scrunchy, can be recycled through this Kirby program. But to make sure that it's recycled, you need to put it in the special yellow Kirby bag and add your special tags that come with it. And that means that when it goes to the recycling sorting factory, they'll be able to recognize it. They've got a mechanical arm that is searching for the, the special tags that scans it and grabs it and takes it out. Um, so if you just put soft plastics in your yellow bin, not in the special yellow bag and without the yellow tag, then that will create contamination within our recycling bin. Um, so it does need to be part of the program in the special bag with the special tags for it to be picked up as recycling. So if you're interested in doing that, if you're not doing it already, um, jump on to the Kirby program. Um, just search for Kirby the Bilby um, on Google or go on to either our Facebook page or the council's Facebook page and you'll find the information. So we're the first um, council in Australia to sign up to it. 
And we had over 2,000 people in the, um, the trial program and it worked really well. And we've already had um, over 6,000 residents sign up since we've opened it up to the whole coast. Um, so it, it is a little bit of effort to, to join and get it sent out to you, um, but then it's really easy. And if you're already taking those items to Coles or Woolies, it's just one less step. You don't have to go to the shops with those items now. You've just got to make sure you put the special tag on and pop it into your yellow lid bin at home and they'll get it recycled. Um, any questions, Jodie? I think we're keeping up. Sorry, I was just typing no, response okay. to I one and a couple more have come in. going up and up. <laughs> All right, just let me know. Um, I'll keep going, but we've got another poll coming up anyway, so you can let me know then. Sorry, um, Michelle, did you talk about um, meat trays? I did talk about the meat trays, yeah. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm just, yeah, I can't quite listen to you and type at the same time, yeah. sorry. Yeah, no, I did cover meat trays. Um, There's a question about um, where the recycled material goes to. I think you're coming up to that, aren't you? Yeah, we do, yeah. yeah. We, I'm a, I will be talking about where all the recycling goes very shortly. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us. This is the most people we've had on one of our Zooms. So it's been, it's very exciting. Um, so our top five recycling tips. So do not place your recycling in a plastic bag. Now, of course, if you're doing the Kirby program, this is where our messaging gets really confusing now with Kirby. If you're doing the Kirby program, you're only putting the soft plastics into a bag. All of your other recycling needs to go in your yellow lid bin loosely. Um, we need to be able to sort those items into their different um, materials that they're made out of. We also get lots of people still that use the recycling bin just as a general waste bin. So they're putting bags of rubbish into the yellow bin. So when a, a bag comes into the sorting facility, they can't stop and check every single bag to see if it has recycling in it or rubbish in it. Anything that's in a bag will be assumed to be general waste and will end up at landfill. So it's really important that you're putting all of your recycling into the bin loosely. Um, also, you need to, you might get say a wheat bix box and put all your bottles and cans into the box and, and take that to the bin. Um, it's easy to carry it all to the bin that way. But when you get to the bin, you need to empty out that box as well. So we want it all separate and loose. So even if it's contained in a box, it, it might fall out in the truck, it might not, it might end up being stuck in there. So make sure at your end that you um, pop it all into your um, bin loosely. So we need to make sure that the bottles and cans and tubs and jars are empty and don't have any um, food or liquids left in them. If it's a liquid item like a, a bottle of milk or a, a bottle of soft drink or a can of um, beer or a bottle of wine, as long as it's empty, you don't need to give that a rinse. Um, if you want to rinse it for your own personal smell in your kitchen or in your bin, that's okay. But from a recycling perspective, as long as it's empty, you don't need to rinse it out. Um, if it was a, a tin of tomatoes and you've got the residue on there, then you need to get your spoon and scrape the edges or give it a quick rinse in your dirty washing up water before you recycle it. What we don't want is food falling out of your containers and bottles and tubs and landing on the paper and cardboard that's in your bin. Because all of the metals and plastics and glass items, they can be washed and they, a lot of them are melted and that removes any of the food. But the paper items is the items that's hard to get clean once food and different products have landed on it. So um, that's the main reason we need no food or liquids going there. We get asked about lids a lot and it, it's really not a massive deal um, from the recycler's end. They um, are telling us to ask people to remove them though and pop them in the, the yellow lid bin separately. So you can still put them in there. Um, some of them are quite small and they may fall through some of the gaps in the recycling system when we're sorting. Um, but because of the process that our glass is going through at the moment, they usually get mixed in with our glass items, which is sort of our small breakable items, all of the lids that a little might get mixed in with there. The company that's sorting our glass though is also recycling our glass. So they've been able to then sift through, get all those plastic lids out and separate them that way to then get them added to the mixed plastics for recycling. 
So the message is to remove lids, but you can pop them into your yellow lid bin um, separately. Um, as I mentioned before, though, with the tin lids, if you pop them inside the can and just gently push the lid together, then that keeps that um, steel item all together. Um, so we mentioned before that um, paper and cardboard need to be flattened, but you should leave your containers, cans and bottles in their 3D shape. And that comes down to our sorting process. If in doubt, um, don't put it in your yellow bin. So if you're not sure, but you're hopeful that it could be recycled, just check first. So um, jump onto our website, give us a phone call, send us a message on our socials, um, but don't put it in the recycling bin, hoping that it's recyclable if you're not sure. We call that wish cycling <laughs> from our end. We have lots of wish cyclers that put, you know, old bedding in the yellow bin or their old plastic baskets, hoping that we might be able to recycle it. If you're not sure, check our website, jump on, give us a phone call and ask, and we'll, we will let you know for sure. Okay, our next poll question is on recycling symbols. So if a product has a recycle symbol on it, that means I can place it in my yellow lid recycle bin. True or false? Okay, I'll just give you a few more seconds there. I think most of us have replied. So most of you have said false, a couple of truths there. Um, it is false. So I would love to be able to tell you that if the item you're looking at tells you you can recycle it, to then put it in your yellow bin, because that would make my job so much easier. But unfortunately, um, it's not always the case. So um, those recycling signs, there's no, um, I guess, legislation or process that um, packaging companies need to follow to be able to put that sign on their product. Um, and at the end of the day, most items could potentially be recycled. So they may not be lying, but it's that we may not be able to recycle it in our system or we may not be able to sort it. So um, the two main reasons why we will say we can't recycle something is we either can't sort the item out in the sorting facility or there's no market to recycle it. So we need to be able to have someone that's willing to take it to turn it into something new, or we need to be able to sort it into the right category or as its own separate item. And when we accept so many different items in our yellow bin, we call that commingled recycling. When we accept paper and cardboard and bottles and cans and containers, then it does mean that we do have to put a limit on some items because it's just physically impossible to be able to sort it. Yep, Jodie? Here's one I'm not sure of because I don't, retain statistics um, <laughs> off the top of my head. Do we know what percentage of items in recycling are wish cycling? Oh, no, I don't know off the top of my head either. We would have some data on it though um, from when we've done audits, which would show um, things like textiles. It's, it isn't a huge amount, but out of the items that we don't accept it is um, significant. Um, the, the biggest item that we get that we don't accept in the recycling bin is soft plastics, but now we can accept them, but they need to be presented in a particular way. And we haven't done any, um, any research on that since we've started Kirby, which is something we will have to look into um, in the coming months now to see how much contamination is still soft plastics presented in the wrong way. Um, but soft plastics is definitely or was the biggest um, contaminant, which it's great now that it's not considered contamination, but still it needs to be presented in a certain way. I can see already how tricky this message is going to be to get out. <laughs> yes, Jody. Can the plastic small tops be inserted into a bulk, in bulk into a clean plastic empty bottle for recycling? No, um, and the reason for that is a few different reasons. Um, if something comes into the facility, not that that would create a lot of weight, I guess, but 
the the weight of an item can determine where it ends up in the facility. So it might mean that it goes to the wrong area. Um, and then also some of the plastics are still sorted into different plastic categories for recycling. So if the lids are a different um, plastic to the bottle, then it could create an issue further down the line. Um, and so the company that sorts our recycling are called IQ Renew. They are also processing the glass and they are also in the process of setting up a facility to process the mixed plastics, um, which is where those lids would go. So they're telling us to say to people to put them in loosely because they can um, cope with them loosely and get them into the section of the facility they want. So it's still best to follow their instructions on that and pop them into the bin um, loosely and they will get it to the section of the factory that they want. So um, Council and Cleanaway have a really good relationship with our sorting facility and we reach out to them all the time with our questions if we're not sure of something and they're very honest with us when they um, when they can and can't do something and, and when they need us to make changes, which is why we are quite um, open with residents, I think, on, on what we will and won't accept. And then we do get a bit of criticism sometimes from people saying, oh, but I moved from Sydney and they said I could do that in Sydney, whereas we feel like we're, we're very transparent with our residents with what we can and can't recycle because we do have such good relationships with our facility and want to make sure that our recycling is is the right way so that it is marketable and can be sold and recycled um, which is why sometimes our messaging might be a bit different from what we see from other councils so I do need to update this in a way because soft plastics aren't contamination anymore so we're just looking at the contamination um, page now and we're going to show some items that we can and can't recycle but they are still considered contamination if you're not using Kirby. So I guess that's the main message that we really need to get out there now. So hopefully, I mean, if you've all signed on today to listen to our talk, I'm sure most of you have already signed up for Kirby um, because you're obviously interested in recycling and waste management. But if you're not, please do make sure you sign up so that you can be a part of that. So you do, they are still a contaminant if they're not in that yellow Kirby bag and yellow Kirby tag. Um, so other plastic items that we can't accept though, so no polystyrene, no plant pots, um, no plastic baskets like laundry tubs or plastic toys, no toothpaste tubes or toothpaste um, brushes, no disposable plastic forks or spoons or um, straws. Um, no medical waste. So all of those different plastic items, um, they're not bottles or containers from the kitchen, bathroom or laundry. So that's the best thing to remember. We can only recycle those bottles and containers from the kitchen, bathroom or laundry. We know that they're the right types of plastic, they're the right shapes and they've held the right items. Um, one of the other issues we have with plastics is if it's black, um, a lot of black plastics, we just can't um, recognise them in our sorting facility because of that black colour and we use black um, uh, conveyor belts to sort on, but also the black dye can become a problem when recycling as well. So that's why we say, again, another reason for no for meat trays. A lot of meat trays are black and no for the plant pots. A lot of the plant pots are black, but also they've had that soil material in them, which the um, when we're recycling back into food grade, they've just got really strict and a bit funny about accepting different products that could potentially be seen as hazardous. Um, no clothing, no bedding, no old pillows. Um, that's our wish cycling again, where people think, oh, it could be re- um, you know, someone could reuse it, I'll put it in the recycling bin. So we're not an op shop, we're, we're recycling into something new, um, not reusing it. Um, so here's our paper items that I, I mentioned before, we, we all thought paper was the easiest thing to recycle, but now it's becoming trickier and trickier. Um, and that's because a lot of our paper and cardboard items are actually mixed with plastics or foil liners to help either preserve the product or keep the item um, liquid tight or keep the item hot, um, which means it makes it much more difficult to recycle it in a paper and cardboard recycling setting. 
So we do say no to things like Tetra packs um, because they've got those different foil liners in them. Pringle packets are the same. So those Pringles um, tubes that your chips come in, they've got a foil lining inside them and a plastic coating. The same as if you buy um, your gray box in that little tube container or um, baking powder might come in it as well. So if you open up any of those tubes and it's got that foil lining or plastic coating, then it does need to go into your red bin, unfortunately. Um, also your McDonald's and 7-Eleven um, Slurpee cups or any of those cups that have a liquid in them, they've all got those plastic coatings, which makes it hard for recycling. Uh, the newspapers wrapped in plastics, we don't really get, um, most of us don't get newspapers anymore, but if you're still getting newspapers delivered and it's wrapped in plastic and you're not reading it, then um, you need to take the plastic off before you put the newspaper in the recycling bin. Same as if you're getting your open road magazines or, or any other magazines delivered that you don't read that are wrapped in plastic, um, you need to take the plastic off before you put it in the yellow bin. No tissues, no serviettes, no um, paper towel. So that comes down to a hygiene thing. We're finding, you know, paper towels and that are used in um, in bathrooms for drying hands and wiping up messes, tissues. It's pretty obvious, but we get a lot of them being put in the recycling bin still. Um, so nothing that's come into contact with bodily fluids. No masks, we're getting lots of disposable masks everywhere in our environment, but also in the recycling bin. So um, again, they need to go into your red lid bin, um, cut the straps before you put them in, just in case they do become airborne or litter so that they're not hurting wildlife. No hazardous items in any of your bins. Um, so no gas bottles, no butane canisters or cooking oil, um, the, the little camping or um, canisters that you put into your, your camp um, barbecues, no car batteries or household batteries, um, no building materials, no food scraps, and no glass items that aren't bottles or jars. So again, um, you know, those light globes can contain little bits of mercury and the different types of glass can have um, different kinds of leads in them as well. So we don't want them um, mixed in with the glass we're using in our recycling. Okay, so what happens? We're still talking about recycling. I feel like we've been talking a lot. We are going to quickly cover the other two bins they, as well. They aren't as um, complex as our recycling system. So what happens to your recycling? So the truck collects it and we take it to what's called a materials recovery facility. We call that a MRF for short, an MRF. And the first step is the sorters remove contamination by hand. So anything wrong that's gone into the yellow bin is removed by a person. Um, they are removing all different types of things from, you know, clothing and shoes to dirty nappies. Um, they estimate we remove up to 5,000 dirty nappies every single week. So it's not a small job or a little item. Um, so, it, you know, when you are going to the bin or even if you're sending your kids to the bin, you know, really making sure that you're following up on, on which bin they're putting everything in. Because if it is a wrong item, then it's literally in someone else's hands to remove. And um, as I mentioned, those disposable nappies, it's not a nice, nice thing for them to be dealing with on such a frequent basis. Um, once they've removed the wrong items, then we have machinery that sorts the rest of the recycling. So we call this one a disc screen, um, and it's doing the first initial sort where um, rotating discs are rolling upwards, flat items, which we're hoping are paper and cardboard, will float up over the top. Round items, which are bottles and cans, will roll back down onto a separate conveyor belt that's underneath. And then glass items will break on these discs and drop through the cracks and fall onto a third conveyor belt. So we're sorting into three different categories here, paper and cardboard going up, bottles and cans rolling down, and glass bottles and jars breaking and dropping through. We then use um, near-infrared lasers to help sort our plastics into different categories. We use things like um, magnets to sort our steel and an eddy current to repel all of the aluminium items. We then do have some further um, manual sorting by people just to make sure that everything's gone into the right spot. So when we have um, things like flattened bottles and containers, they might get mixed in with the paper and cardboard. So just making sure that none of those have sort of gone through the gaps. 
And then um, everything is bailed except for the glass. The glass is crushed and um, put into the back of trucks, loose and crushed. And the, um, all of the plastics and metal and cardboard is bailed though and put into these great big cubes. And then it's sent off to different factories for recycling. So as I said, the sorting process is done by a company called IQ Renew, and they have different contracts set up with different companies that then take our recycling to turn it into new items and process it. So they actually keep the glass themselves and they take it to their virtual quarry in Wyong where they um, double wash and crush the glass um, and it's crushed down into a fine um, sand substitute and used in the construction industry. The metal items are taken to various metal recyclers in the Sydney region where the metal is melted and turned into blocks. Um, so real simple process when it comes to recycling our metals that just goes into a really hot furnace and melted down. They don't need to add anything extra to metals to strengthen it up. Um, it's a really great item to be recycling. We call that 100% recyclable where we can just melt it down and use it again. Uh, so those um, metal blocks are then sent to various factories where it could be turned into uh, new cans, fencing, roofing, appliances, bikes, cars, really back into anything steel or aluminium. Um, they say some of the aluminium we're using um, in our drink cans was mined over 50 years ago. So that's, you know, it just can be recycled over and over again. Uh, plastics is one of the harder ones for processing. Um, it's sent at the moment to advanced circular polymers in Victoria, um, where they wash and flake it. So the flakes are then sent to different factories where it could be um, new ingredients are generally added to plastic to strengthen it back up. So it could be turned into new bottles, containers, carpet, clothing, wheelie bins and furniture. So IQ Renew, though, are actually involved in trying to get a new recycling facility set up in um, Summersby that's using um, some new technology that um, will actually turn that plastic um, back into its original components of oil and all of the different parts it's made up into. And then that can be recycled, um, sent off to recyclers back in that um, original component. So that will be exciting if they can get... Um, approval to have that um, facility locally in Summersby and actually have some of our plastics being recycled here. And I think that's what they're um, proposing all of that Kirby plastic will be going into. So paper and cardboard items are sent to either uh, Visi or Opal ANZ in Sydney, New South Wales. Um, so the paper and cardboard's washed, de-inked, turned to a pulp and then new ingredients sorry, new ingredients are added to make um, those products stronger. Um, and that could be turned back into toilet paper, tissues, paper towel, newspaper, kitty litter, and back into cardboard packaging. So why is it so important to recycle? So um, we've been recycling for a long time on the Central Coast now, and it, it just becomes a daily activity where you don't really stop and think about the benefit of it anymore. Um, we've had bins, recycle bins for over 20 years now. Um, but it is still stopped, good, in, good to sort of stop and think that it is a good thing to be doing. Um, and locally, the most important reason we recycle is to make sure that we're not sending that waste to landfill. Um, so to reduce the amount of rubbish we're sending to landfill. Um, also the it saves on the natural resources. So. Um, that's something we tend to stop thinking about now that everything we're using has been made from something from our earth. And when we recycle that item, it means we don't have to take those items from our earth again to make new items. We can reuse those resources that we've already taken. And that's a message that's really gotten lost um, in our world now. When I go to a school and ask children why it's important to recycle, they'll tell me it's to save the turtles. Um, which is why we don't litter, not why we recycle. We recycle to save our natural resources so that we don't have to chop down new trees. Um, and that's a, a really important message to still remember and talk to your children and your grandchildren about and make sure they realise that the things we're using have come from the earth. And when we recycle, we don't have to take more. Um, 
it's good to, to not litter and help save the turtles as well though. <laughs> uh, saves energy and reduces greenhouse gas emissions. So when we're recycling, it means it's, it's less energy and labor intensive. Um, and that all comes down to helping reduce emissions and greenhouse gases. It creates jobs. It takes more people to recycle something than to landfill it. So it's good for the economy, creates jobs. Hopefully we start seeing a lot more of it happen locally so we can really just help um, create jobs in our area and use our resources here. So recycling helps to make a sustainable future possible. So as I said, it's, it's easy to forget why we do it. It's just become a daily activity, but it's always good to remember, you know, we've produced this waste and this rubbish and when we can recycle it and use it as a resource, it's a much better thing than um, putting it in our red bin and sending it to landfill. Now we've still got other bins to talk about. Now I won't get offended if anyone does want to drop off because I've already been talking for an hour. Um, so I do, I appreciate you coming and listening. Um, we are going to talk about the green bin, the red bin and how we can reduce waste to landfill and about some other recycling options at the end. I will be able to go through this pretty quickly. So if you do want to hang on, it, it will be sort of 10, 15 minutes max. Um, but I, I really won't be offended if you do drop off as well. So um, thank you for those of you that have, are still here and listening. It's great that you're spending your Thursday afternoon learning about your waste management system. <laughs> so in your garden lid bin, um, you can put grass clippings, um, plant trimmings and weeds, leaves and bark, twigs, sticks and branches. So at the moment, our green lead bin is just a garden vegetation bin. So it is just for things growing in your garden. You can put small bits of untreated timber in there as well. So, but untreated means um, not chemically treated, no nails, no paints. So it needs to be, you know, natural timber to go into your garden bin. This bin will eventually turn into some kind of food organics, garden organics bin. Um, it is being talked about at council. It is being talked about by the state government that we have to do that. Um, so we can expect that that will happen eventually. But at the moment, the process it goes to and the facility it goes to isn't licensed to accept food waste. So we can't, we can't put organic material in at the moment. It's just garden vegetation. Um, but a system will be in place eventually where we will be doing something with our other organic waste. Um, and I would say that that will happen within the next five years. Jody, can you confirm or? Sorry, Michelle, I'm trying, I'm looking up information. Can you repeat the question? FOGO, food organics, garden organics within five years or less, or we don't know. Yeah, I can't confirm the time frame. It's definitely being looked into. I believe it will be within five years. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, sorry. That's okay. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's happening, but it just needs, yeah, time to happen. Council's very, um, been very eager to watch how other people are going with it. So we make sure we get the right system in place here because um, yes, it's important to reduce that waste going to landfill, but we need to make sure that the product that's being produced at the other end is still a viable product that someone will take and use. So um, they've sort of been watching how other councils are going and we will get there. I mean, we have to, the state government said that we have to do it. So it, it's coming um, soon, but for now, it still is just a garden bin. Um, so no, you know, we get all types of things being put in there it's certainly not as much contamination in our green bins as our recycle bins less than one percent but you know anything from the garden we will find in there so people are just putting their whole pots um, in there and their bits of garden hose um, dog poop and you know maybe they're not picking it up when they're mowing and it's just going in um, treated timber People put a lot of paper and cardboard in the green bin as well. And then obviously if, if you get something and it, it tells you to put it in there, so you, you might get something that says it's compostable and to put it in your green bin. Um, but at this stage, we can't accept those kinds of items in there. So it is just a garden bin, a garden vegetation bin at the moment. What happens to it? Um, so our trucks will collect your, your garden bin and deliver it to Australian Native Landscapes, or ANL. Um, so they have 
um, both got uh, processing facilities at the, the Button Dairy Waste Management Facility at Jillaby and at the Woi Woi Waste Management Facility. Um, so at the Button Dairy Facility, it does go through the whole composting process there, but at the um, Woi Woi Facility, it's just shredded on site and then they transport it to another facility to go through that whole composting stage. Um, so contamination is removed and then the vegetation goes into a shredding machine. Material is put into rows, we call them windrows, and they leave them like that for up to 14 weeks. Um, they are turned during that time to get aeration, um, to make sure it's really good bacteria working to sort of break that material down. It does need to reach over 66 degrees during that composting process to make sure that um, pathogens are killed and that weed seeds aren't going to spread if you've put some, some weeds in your green bin. We certainly don't want to then um, be using that as a compost and having those seeds um, in there still. So it, it goes through a lot of um, testing to make sure that all of that happens. Um, they do add things like biosolids to it, which is the end of the, um, the sewage treatment work. So that all does get mixed in there as well. Um, and they'll add different sands and different types of products to it to get different grades of compost or mulch material that it's turned into. So um, a &L will then distribute that through, you know, nurseries and bunnings, or they, they use it as rehabilitation in mining areas and on farms as well. So that product's then sold to the community. What can you put in your general waste bin? So you would think the things that we can't put in the other bins go in there. So it's your wrappers, which again, we need to update for Kirby. If you're using Kirby, obviously we're using that um, in our yellow bin. Food scraps, nappies, meat trays, the shredded paper, your long life cartons and cups, disposable items like tissues and masks and the paper towel and the pet waste into the red bin. Uh, still nothing hazardous or dangerous, obviously. So no, you know, gas bottles or um, car batteries. We had someone put a four litre container of acid in one of their bins the other day that nearly started a fire in the back of our trucks. So all of those items, you know, there's a reason why we don't want you putting them in the bins. It can be um, lethal to our drivers and to the community when hazardous waste goes into your red bins. What happens to that? Um, it, we take it to the, the two operating local landfills. So there's the Button Dairy Waste Management Facility and Woi Woi. So Kingcumber facility, facility is no longer an operational landfill. So we don't tip there anymore. It's to capacity but we still have access to Woi Woi and Button Dairy um, for still quite a long time at both of those facilities for landfilling. Um, so the process is, is that the waste is compacted and buried in the ground. So you can see the machine there that's got TANA on it. That's the compactor and that drives over the top of the rubbish, um, compacting it, squishing it and making it as small as possible and pushing it right down into the ground. So it's a really heavy machine to help do that, to make sure there's no um, air pockets or wastage in the landfill. It's the most important machine that they've got out there because it gives space, it creates space in the landfill. So that's the most important thing is to, to save space, make the rubbish as small as possible so that the landfill will last a long time. Um, they do have a landfill gas capturing system in both of the landfills. So that captures all of the methane gas and converts it um, into electricity and feeds it back into the grid system. So once landfills uh, reach their end of life, they're closed and capped with a layer of compacted clay, topsoil and grass are added and ongoing monitoring is conducted for many years. Once deemed safe, they might be used as um, recreational areas and playing fields after um, post closure and monitoring of maintenance are completed. That probably won't happen for the, the landfills we've got now. I think council will probably try and maintain them as some kind of waste management facility for, for the rest of time <laughs> or for as long as time will allow. But um, just out of interest, there are a lot of old uh, landfills that are now playing fields on the Central Coast, including Hilton Moor Park, Adcock Park, James Brown Oval and Pat Morley Oval. Every single thing you put in your red bin is buried in the hole in the ground. 
so what we call the landfill. It stays there forever and we do nothing else with it. Uh, so it's, you know, just really important to think of when we go to the bin that we do just bury that waste in the ground. We don't do anything else with it. If you can do something else with it, then you should be doing that instead of putting it in your red bin. It's everyone's responsibility to make sure we're reducing that waste going to landfill. Um, Jody always tells a great story about um, when they were working out at Button Dairy and they dug into one of the old landfill cells from the 1990s, which I know it doesn't feel like that long ago, but it is 20 years ago. <laughs> um, and they could still read a newspaper that someone had put into the red bin, an express advocate newspaper from the 1990s. They could read that newspaper. So even the paper that's been in the landfill for over 20 years still hasn't broken down. So the landfills have no oxygen or that, you know, it's all taken out and compacted down and it takes a really long time for it to break down. So anything that's you know, not organic that's going in there is going to be there for a really long time. So it's important we try and reduce as much as we can. And if there's something else we can do with it, then we don't put it in the landfill. How can we reduce the amount of waste we send to landfill? So you, I'm sure you've heard of reduce, reuse, recycle, but we've added lots of R's to our reduce, reuse, recycle, um, which we call the waste hierarchy. So the first step is to refuse. Ask yourself, do I really need it? Can I borrow it? Is it a good quality item and expected to last? How long will I be able to use it for? Is there a reusable alternative? Is there an alternative product with little packaging packaging that can be recycled? Reduce is our next step. So check your pantry, fridge and freezer before buying food. Write a shopping list to make sure you do not need to throw away spoiled or out of date products. I mean, at the moment, a lot of us are probably doing online shopping, which is a great um, way to really check what you've got at home you know while you're doing your online shopping or your click and collect order you can be in your your kitchen while you're doing it and checking the fridge and pantry to make sure you're not buying things you don't need I've also started buying smaller shops more frequently rather than a larger shop to last a long time and I find that by doing that it helps with food spoilage so especially with fresh food items rather than trying to buy food to last the whole week just buying for a few days so that you, um, you're not, you know, having food wastage and spoilage. Making sure you store food correctly is really important. So using your fridge and freezer if needed, you know, freezing your bread if you know it's going to go mouldy before you get to use it. Um, you know, using what we've got available to help make that food last longer. Buy some food in bulk though. So I just said, you know, buy more frequently for fresh food but for items that you know will store and last a long time if you buy in bulk then it reduces the packaging of those items take a bag box or basket with you when you go shopping use online guides to try and repair items instead of replacing them with new ones which is a skill that's really going out the window repair um, you know products are definitely made to break much quicker now so if you if you can repair something rather than just buying something new it's obviously the best way to go when we're thinking of wastage make nude food lunches for your family and uh, use reusable containers and lunch boxes to make lunch without any waste not that many of us are leaving the house or sending kids, kids to school at the moment it's going to be a rude shock when we get to go back <laughs> Reuse, look for products in reusable or refillable packaging. Buy secondhand products where practical. Reuse plastic bags around the home. Reuse envelopes and use both sides of your paper. Use a reusable coffee cup and a reusable drink bottles. Use reusable cloth shopping bags and produce bags. Use reusable cloth nappies if you've got babies or for the ladies using um, reusable menstrual products. There's lots of different options out there now. Uh, try rechargeable batteries. So if you've got kids, like I've got boys that are quite young and love their remote control cars and video games, and they go through so many batteries. So the rechargeable batteries really help with that. Um, and it also helps with saying, sorry, you have to wait till the batteries are charged so you can play with that noisy boy. Um, look for refillable ink cartridges as well, if you've got a printer. 
Regift is another new R we've added. So if it's something you don't need or want anymore, sell it, give it away or donate it. So if it's a good quality item and you no longer need it, someone else might. Um, it's hard at the moment. There's not a lot of um, donation for charity options available. Um, but if it's safe to do so, you know, ask someone online if they would like the item. If you don't, if you don't care about getting financial gain for it, try and, and give it away to some friends. Recycle. Because every recycle is one of the, the really last options we should be looking at when it comes to managing our waste. Um, but obviously recycling as much as you can through items accepted in the yellow lid bin. And then there's lots of drop-off recycling programs, which I'm about to um, go through on another slide to tell you some other programs you can tap into to recycle some of those um, items that we don't accept in the yellow bin. Choose products made from recycled materials. If, it, if something tells you that, you know, it's made from recyclable items, choose that product so that it makes it valuable to keep using those items that we're recycling. Um, and then set up a compost bin or a worm farm at home. It's a great way for you to be recycling your food scraps. Recover. So that's where we recover the energy from um, what we are putting into our red bins in the landfill. And then our last R is to rot. So it's the very last thing to send those items to landfill to rot away. So as you can see, the, the waste hierarchy has really grown from the reduce, reuse, recycle message we used to hear back in the, the 80s and 90s. We've got lots of other steps we can take when it comes to managing our waste now. So uh, this poll question is just on seeing what you already are doing at home. Um, this is a multiple choice, so answer as much as you, you can there on all the different items you might already be doing, and it just helps um, us to see what kinds of waste reduction activities people are already doing and um, what are some of the things we might be able to sort of encourage people in the community to do more of. Any questions, Jodie? Sorry. Give me one minute. I was just looking up some information. You're right. There does say one new message that I haven't read yet. No, I think I think we're good. Oh, there is, there's a couple, but we'll leave them to the end or maybe even um, email directly because they're a bit okay. specific. Yeah. And unless you've heard of, um, have you heard from the MRF about disposable masks? Have they mentioned anything? If they're getting a lot of them, or, yeah. no, they haven't mentioned um, to me, but we have, when we were doing bin inspections, which we haven't done bin inspections for at least oh, this lockdown now, but prior, so there weren't as many masks in the community then because they weren't a requirement for our area, but we were seeing them on our bin inspections already. So I imagine that they would be getting some of them. Um, but they haven't, they haven't told us. Um, from my understanding of how the MRF works, that those items, if they were put into the, the yellow bin loosely, and if the sorters didn't collect them out, they would be getting mixed in with the paper and cardboard items. Thank you. I'll just give you another minute there. Thank you, everyone. Lots of people doing lots of fantastic things already. All right, great. Thank you. I'll, I'll end that one now so we can keep on going on. But it's just always good to um, see what people are doing and it might give you a little bit of an idea of other things you could be doing if you're not um, doing them already. But a lot of you were doing most of those things. Okay, so food waste. Whoops, what have I done there? Food waste is... Um, the biggest component of our red bin that we could be reducing. So as we said, um, council will eventually um, set up a food organics garden organic system where we will be able to capture food um, and process it. But there's lots of things that we can be doing to make sure we're not producing so much food waste. Um, and what we're seeing is it's not just the scraps that maybe are considered unedible, like 
peelings and, um, you know, banana skins, but it, it's food that's being wasted because it's spoiled and we haven't had a chance to eat it. So that's where considering our shopping habits and only purchasing food you know will be eaten is a really important step to take. Um, you know, think of the last time you had to throw out, you know, a whole pear or a whole mandarin because it went off before you got to use it. Or um, milk does seem to come with a really long use by date now, I must admit. But, you know, those types of things that maybe are spoiling before you get to um, throw them out. So really looking at those habits and seeing where you can change. And as I said before, just storing food properly, using your fridge and freezer. Um, one thing I've noticed is if I buy, um, you know, the rocket or the salad in the bag from the supermarket, if I take that out of the bag as soon as I get it home and wrap it in paper towel and put that in a container, that will last me for 10 days sometimes. Whereas if you store it in the plastic bag it comes in, it just gets all sweaty and slimy. And then, of course, use, you know, you need to put that plastic bag in your Kirby bag to recycle it if you're using Kirby. <laughs> um, but the way we store food and just thinking about it when you're buying it and making sure you're storing it properly straight away will mean you get a better longevity out of that item. Reheating leftovers or only cooking what you need or freezing it, freezing your leftovers and using it the following week, setting up worm farms and compost bins or a chook pen, um, and then checking out um, Central Coast Council. So they do do some green living workshops, maybe not so much at the moment, um, but it's always worth keeping your eye on their website for that um, to see if they've got any workshops happening. So they do, you know, composting, worm farming, keeping chooks at home, lots of different things you can um, access to help set up some low food waste options for you. Council also has Community Recycling Centre now, which is exciting. This has only opened up recently and it's only at their Button Dairy Waste Management Facility, but you can drop any of these items off for free at the CRC. Um, we are recommending that people do try and hold off visiting um, the waste management facilities if it's really not essential at the moment. So if you've got somewhere safe to store these items until um, our lockdowns have lifted, um, but you can take paints, gas bottles, fire extinguishers, motor oils, other oils, car batteries, household batteries, smoke detectors, and fluoro globes and tubes to the CRC for free. So it's great we've got that access to that now on the Central Coast. Other recycling options. So there's the return and earn facilities. Um, they are currently open again on the Central Coast since we are no longer part of Greater Sydney. They've been able to open, but please, if you do use them, check that you can check on the app to make sure that it's um, available and open and not full and obviously don't leave all your boxes and things that you've taken with you around the site. They can get quite messy when it's been a busy time at them. Um, you can recycle your soft plastics at Coles and Woolworths still, so using the red cycle bins at the front of the register or signing up to the Kirby program and using it in your yellow lid bin at home. Um, and again, a lot of these places might not be um, op operational at the moment due to our lockdown. So it's a matter of holding on to your, these items, storing them safely at home until you can go back to these places to drop them off. But you can recycle um, light globes, mobile phones and household batteries um, in these council collection bins that are located in most council libraries and um, facility centres such as um, their administration buildings. You can recycle batteries at Audi, Battery World and Officeworks. So at Audi, um, they've got, that's the picture you can see at the moment, they've got little collection reciprocals where you pack your groceries and um, that you can take those household batteries to. Um, at Officeworks, you can also recycle printer cartridges, pens and markers as well. And Council also has an electronic waste um, facility for recycling. So um, it's just interesting to note though, if you place um, e-waste out for your bulk curbside collection, it will get landfilled. So it's really important if you've got old electrical waste items to recycle, that you try and make the effort to drop it off to the Council's waste facilities. So that's at, at Button Dairy Waste Management Facility or Woi Woi. Um, it's free to drop those items off and they will get recycled. So it's anything that has an electrical cord can be dropped off as part of that program. 
So if it's got a, a cord to plug in, then you can take it out for the e-waste recycling. Council chemical collection, unfortunately, it was, um, I'm assuming, just postponed, Jody, do you know, or cancelled? Well, I thought it was postponed, but I just, just happened to look up their website and it actually says all that all events scheduled within the lockdown period are cancelled. Okay. Which I think that's just because it's uncertain. When? They'll start them back up as soon as they possibly can. But yeah. So yeah. a lot of the items, well, some of the items accepted through Council Chemical Collection can be taken to the Community Recycling Centre as well. Um, so obviously, as I said, if, it, if it's not urgent, please do try and store it safely somewhere. But if you do have to move or, or anything like that, then the C Community Recycling Centre is open at the moment, um, but it is really just for essential items. Um, and the council's chemical collections will start up again eventually. So there will be options for disposal of those hazardous items. Um, coffee and Slurpee cup recycling. So even though we can't accept them in our service um, because these items need to be separated out as their own individual item to be processed um, by recyclers. So it's, it's quite impossible to do that when we accept so many items in our facilities. Um, but 7-Eleven has set up a program to recycle coffee cups and Slurpee cups. So you can take them back to 7-Eleven. Uh, they will accept any, any coffee cup or Slurpee cup. It doesn't need to be a 7-Eleven cup. Um, and you just drop it into their reciprocal and they'll send it off to a, a processor for recycling. Also, um, I know that Westfield Tugra and Erin Affair also have a coffee cup recycling service set up as well. So again, they've got um, special bins within the shopping centre that just accept those coffee cups so that they can send them to a processor for recycling. Um, if you're interested in trying to recycle some more um, sort of tricky items that you might have at home, it's worth looking at the TerraCycle website. So they've got um, different um, recycling programs set up for things like razor blades and um, oral care programs. So your dentist might already be signed up as a drop-off location. So next time you're at the dentist, just ask them if, if they accept um, oral hygiene products for recycling and you might be able to take your old toothbrushes and toothpaste tubes to them to be dropped off. There's um, there's coffee capsule recycling programs you can tap into. There's lots of different things on the TerraCycle website. So it's worth having a look and seeing if they um, take an item you're using frequently. Often it's just a matter of um, finding either a drop-off place for it or um, picking up, um, being involved in like a post program where you might have to pay for some postage to send it off to them to get it recycled. So thank you so much for joining us to this afternoon. I can see that most people have stayed on and I really appreciate it. Um, we do have lots of information on our website, which is the onecoast.com.au website. We're on social media. So you can, um, if you just search One Coast on Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, you'll come up with all of our um, different socials. We've got loads of videos on YouTube. Um, as I said before, my name is Michelle. That's my email address there. So if you do want to jot it down and send me an email, or you should have it um, from the Zoom registration as well, please, if there's any, any other questions you have, do feel free to send me an email. Um, and just finally, if anyone does have um, primary school age children, please keep a lookout on our socials coming up. We are launching an, a new e-learning platform, hopefully very, very soon. Um, that your children will be able to access and that you'll be able to share with your schools. And we're really excited to get that one out into the community. Whilst we, we can't um, enter schools, I can't see us being able to go into schools this year again now. Um, so we're trying to come up with ways that we can still do some education with schools and with school children. So we're really excited for our new e-learning platform. So please do keep, um, keep your eyes and ears out for all of that. I do just have one last poll to share with everyone if you've got